What's up guys, my name is Jack and today's video is actually going to be a part two of something I had uploaded a few months back titled How to Shoot Rollers and I went over tips, tricks, gear, settings, pretty much everything you need to know to go out there and start taking rolling shots. It was actually one of my most liked videos or I think it is my most liked video on my channel so thank you guys so much to everyone who's supporting that, subscribing, anyone new coming from that video welcome i didn't really show you the actual behind the scenes i had a few clips thrown up on screen but this video is actually going to be dedicated to a behind the scenes video and i'm going to bring the camera with on the car so you can see what it looks like taking the photos i could even throw in edits at the end i didn't talk about editing the photos in the last video so maybe this could be like the full process all the way through before i go and meet up to take the shots i got to show you guys something really cool it actually has to do with all of this shooting video photo Huge part of my business and just an overall life upgrade, I guess. Let me go show you. So if you didn't already know, all the videos on my YouTube channel were filmed out of my 2016 GTI. The car was amazing, it was great fun, but it's not really that practical for film and photo stuff. Also didn't have that much space, but this is my new upgrade for work. Traded in the GTI and ended up getting a minivan and it was honestly the best decision that I could have made and I love everything about it so far. And you could film like pretty much anywhere, film or take photos anywhere in this car. Tons of room in the back. Um, you can sit back here. It's a lot safer than the GTI too because the GTI there wasn't that much space and I do have to get a full harness to put uh, and figure out how to put it up back here. Shout out to Big Apple Magic for actually putting me on the Odyssey what's good thanks for helping me film this bts here's today's model for the shoot you ready how's it feel to be driving on the wrong side of the car freaking awesome <laughs> so we got the nd filter on the wrist strap so i can avoid dropping my camera and uh we're doing shutter speed anywhere from 125th to 140th of a second more in-depth settings are in my last video. I'll go ahead and link that in the description and probably throw it on screen somewhere. I explain everything on why I use these settings. So if you guys want to check out that video, I'd really appreciate it. Farthest lane. So we're back home on the computer. We've got all the images from the shoot imported into Lightroom. I picked out a few here that I think would be good to show you guys how I edit these images. Let me just start by saying editing is completely up to the person. Not everybody's going to have the same workflow and the same interest in colors and lighting and how they edit their photos. It's all going to be different. Everyone's got different interests, but this is just how I do it, and you don't have to follow this at all, or maybe this will teach you something. I just figured I'd share my experience, and if you enjoy it, be sure to leave a like on this video, and let's get into the edit. The very first thing I do with these images is set the crop. Now, I've already set the crop on all of the images to save some time, but the next thing would be to come down to the lens corrections tab and select remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Lightroom can actually detect what lens you are using and correct any of the harsh vignettes in the sides of your image and kind of smooth it out and make it look better. After I make sure those boxes are checked, I come to the basic tab and just work my way down from here the whole way through pretty much and then adjust what I need to later. Now, if you're new to Lightroom, I highly recommend you go ahead and play with all of these sliders so you can understand what each one does. And that's honestly how I started. I was just messing around with all the sliders, trying to understand what each thing did. Just looking at this image, it does look a little underexposed and dark. You can see all of the settings that you use to shoot this photo right here under the histogram. For example, 1 40th of a second, aperture of f8, 24 millimeters and ISO 250 is the settings I use to take this photo. 
So first thing I'm going to do is come to the exposure tab and increase this up a little bit. It's about right there looks fine to me. Can lift up the highlight some. Shadows definitely. Whites I bring up every image because I think it does give a little bit more punch. And the blacks are coming up as well to right there looks fine. I try to keep the editing as minimal as possible, like especially in this tab in the presence down here with clarity and texture. I'm not going to go crazy with it, maybe increase it just a little bit. Let's increase some of the vibrance. I like using the vibrance slider more than the saturation because vibrance affects midtones where saturation will affect the entire image as a whole, but not going to go crazy with the saturation either. Right there, totally fine. Come up to the temperature, warm it up a little bit, slide this to the right. Right there looks fine. Move the tint to the right as well. That looks good so far. Just from the basic adjustments tab, we've already taken the image from this to this, and I think that's looking pretty good so far. Next up would be the tone curve, and I'm still actually learning how to use this to the best of my ability. I really don't go too crazy with this at all. I do find that if you add something called a S curve here, it can increase contrast and give a little bit more punch to the image. Now, how I start doing that is I place a point in the middle here so it doesn't affect the midtones. Pull up in the highlights a little bit. And these are just very, very minor adjustments. I'm not doing anything crazy here at all. Just barely anything. And then lift down here to maybe introduce some fade and turning that on and off you can see the look that it gives and I like that how it is next up is the HSL and color sliders this is where you can really manipulate you know what colors are in the image maybe shift the blues a little bit this way to the left saturation will increase a tiny bit in the oranges and the yellows I really do like the warm feeling that the sunset was given off for this photo. Luminance adjusts how bright each color is. So you see if moving this around, you can see what that does. Maybe lift up the oranges a little bit. The blues we could brighten up just a tiny bit as well. That looks fine. All right, now the color grading split toning section, you can really pinpoint what colors you want in the midtones, shadows, and the highlights. I'm not going to touch the highlights and the shadows for this image, but I might mess around and see what color I can pull out of the midtones. Might go for a little blue. You can also dial in how much saturation. Once again, I'm not going to go crazy with the sliders. Very little saturation. And we can actually increase the luminance values of the midtones as well. So we're going to lift that up a little bit, maybe plus 20. Looks fine. And that looks good to me. You can click this eye right here to turn it on and off and see the adjustment it made. Very, very slight, subtle adjustments, but I think that works. So in the detail tab is where you can control sharpening and noise reduction if needed. One trick I like to do when sharpening my photos is instead of sharpening the entire image as a whole, right? You can hold option, go to this masking slider, and it's going to turn white and show you exactly what you're going to be sharpening. So rather than sharpening the entire image like this, you can pull this masking slider to the right. And that looks like we're going to be sharpening pretty much just the car. So that's where I want it. We'll let go of option, come up to sharpening and increase that a bit. I think about 70 is fine. Car looks good. Nice and sharp. Noise reduction. There isn't that much noise in this photo. I don't see. I'm not going to touch the noise reduction. Under the effects tab is where you can add a vignette to your image and it can darken up the corners and really draw your eye towards the car. I'm not going to go crazy with that. Maybe just slight vignette. Negative four looks fine to me. This calibration section is another way of manipulating colors, and honestly, I just recommend playing around with each slider to see what it is that you like. One thing I found that works for me that I like the look of is I almost always increase this green slider, the hue to the right, and then this blue slider to the left. Once I've gone through and messed with all the sliders, I'll come back up and adjust anything if necessary. Right now, this image looks fine to me. 
and the last thing that I do is add a linear gradient to the road. You can just drag up on the image. All of this red here is just going to show you what's going to be affected in your image. Now, what I like to do is grab the exposure and make the road just a little bit darker. That way, I feel like the car is like the focal point and I like to increase the clarity. I feel like that makes the ground look like it's moving a bit faster than you actually are. Maybe right there looks fine. And... That, I think, is it for this image. So we go ahead and look at the before, after. Yeah, I think that looks great. Maybe I'll increase the exposure just a little bit, tiny bit more, drop the highlights a little bit. Might just increase the blacks a little bit more. And I think that this image is done. Here's the before and after. Looks great to me. So on to the next image. This is just going to be a little trick I'm going to show you guys. If you've got a shot that is very similar to the one you just took previously, all I've got to do is hit copy. And that will copy all of these settings over here. Click on the new image and paste. I might have to adjust the exposure a little bit. I'll drop that tiny bit. Highlights are fine. Might raise the blacks a little bit, drop the shadows, and that looks fine to me. Some things you are going to have to add back, like if I want to add that linear gradient, I'll go ahead and do that real quick, drag up on the road, drop the exposure a tiny bit, and increase clarity, and I think that's good. Before, after, you know, I might drop the highlights a tiny bit. I just remembered he told me before the shoot his lips fallen off. That's what that is. Corey, didn't mean to call you out like that, but get that fixed, bro. All right, really quick, I had to hop into Photoshop and show you guys a super simple trick on how to remove any unwanted, I guess, distracting pieces from your image using the Spot Healing Brush tool in Photoshop. Now, super simple. You just click on the Spot Healing Brush and paint away anything that you don't want in the image. It's actually really simple. I didn't like the way that these street lights looked in the photo, so you see me painting away and they are just disappearing. There are other ways to do this in Photoshop, like the Clone Stamp Tool or Content Aware Fill. However, I feel the Spot Healing Brush is the quickest, easiest way to do it. Lightroom also has its own healing brush, but I think Photoshop does it way better, and it's just something I do at the very end of the edit get into Photoshop, remove any unwanted stuff, and save the image that way. The end results usually always look great. Just be careful not to miss a spot or go too overboard with it to the point where you can start seeing all of the things that uh, were removed from your image. I forgot to mention earlier in the video that yes, all of these photos are shot in RAW, and I highly recommend every photographer to shoot their photos in RAW. That way, when you get into Lightroom and any post-processing, you have more control over the lighting and the colors. There's just a lot more information to work with when you shoot in a RAW file as opposed to something like JPEG. I have to mention, in case anybody wants to say anything in the comments, that yes, it says Nissan GTS here, and the title might say GTST. That's because the owner was explaining to me the car had a front clip swap done, meaning that everything from the steering wheel forward is from a GTST, including the motor and it's turboed and everything. So yes, we're calling it a GTST. So this image is a lot darker and the lighting conditions are a bit different. So we'll start fresh on this. Once again, come down to lens corrections. We'll enable these. So we'll go ahead, increase the exposure. There's fine. Pull up the highlights a bit. Shadows are coming up. When you do increase the shadows and the blacks in an image, you are going to lose some contrast, but don't worry, we're going to add that right back. You can do that with this contrast slider, but we're actually going to do more of that in the tone curve down here in a second. I do want to adjust this white balance a little bit. What you can do with that is grab this dropper and you can place it in a neutral like gray area and see if that gives you something that you like, but I'll do this manually, cool it off a little bit, and maybe increase the tint. That looks fine. I kind of like this blue, pinkish, purple look that we've got going on in the sky. I think that looks pretty interesting. For this tone curve, I'm not going to place a point in the middle, because let's just see what it does without affecting the mid-tones. 
might be good to lift them up a little bit anyway. So point there, point here. Once again, we're doing that very, very slight S curve. Seeing what we can make happen. That looks okay. And then we can come down here and lift this up a tiny bit. Let's adjust this a little bit more. And that looks fine. Turn this on and off. I like what we've got now. A little bit of fade, a little bit more punch. Down to the HSL tab. What do we have? Play around with these oranges. It affects a little bit of the light. We'll push that more to the red side because I want those lights to look more red than they do orange. You can mess with the blues a little bit. Push that to the left. This luminance tab, I do want to increase the brightness of these taillights, but you don't want to go crazy because you see if you do push it too far, you'll end up getting some weird gradient up in the sky as well. So we're going to only increase that a tiny bit. It is looking a little bit cool in the mid-tones, so we could warm that up just a little bit. Be like right there. Pull the luminance up a tiny bit. You can increase the highlights a little bit on this too. Let's turn this on and off. And I think that looks much better. We'll do this masking trick again, so we can affect mainly the car. Let's go ahead and increase sharpness, about 70 is fine. This image was a bit darker, and the ISO was increased a little bit, so there is a little bit of noise, nothing crazy. We can add some noise reduction, maybe like 15 should be fine. And we'll come down to the calibration tab and do that same little adjustment. Or like plus 20 and minus 5 on the blues so very minimal I think that looks fine and before after I think we're looking great and the last thing to do is that darken up the road a tiny bit and increase the clarity and that looks fine before, after. I'm pretty satisfied with how these images came out. We took this photo from this to this. I think that's a pretty decent edit. I might go back in later and just clean up maybe one of these poles or some of the telephone lines to just clean it up a little bit, but I think this turned out pretty well. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and comment what you guys want to see next. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. There will be more features, behind the scenes, and tutorials coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Peace.